Look around you, it's spooky season here at the Combot Collective, here with our October Bowbots Proving Grounds preview and fitting for the month. We got snakes, we got sinners, we got scorpions, we got spiders, and we even got some clowns. They're all here, and we're talking about the spiders, the clowns, and more on this Proving Grounds preview here at the Combot Collective. Let's talk about some exciting new and old robots right here, right now. Stay tuned. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another BattleBots Proving Grounds preview episode here at the Combat Collective, bringing everything you want to know from the world of robot combat, from the heavyweight class to the fleetweight class, from BattleBots to the live circuit. And today, people, today, we got our October BattleBots Proving Grounds preview and a little bit of a Halloween special episode here, as you can see today, over the next month. We covered a TCC pumpkin. Look at this thing. Isn't it awesome? Pretty happy about that. Not the only place you're going to see a TCC logo this week. Super stoked about that. More on that during our Amidst the Havoc stream later on this weekend. But yes, as always, I am here, your host, Sterling Brown, a.k.a. Sterling TXTG on Instagram, Query to 300th on Reddit and Discord. Earlier this month, we provided everyone with the second edition of our monthly Proving Grounds preview series, covering all of September's new robots from Fireball and the Twins to Hellfire and Swamp Thing. Some of these robots shocked and impressed inside the battle box, such as Fireball, who became the first Proving Grounds competitor to challenge a 300-plus pound showbot with Witch Doctor, and Taco Tuesday, whose intricate and unique design managed to score a KO on the impressive rookie Disarray. Those five robots all have come and gone now, though. We're on to a new month with October, and October means a lot of things. It means the spurring of cool, crisp air, the start of the holiday season, playoff baseball in full swing, but most importantly of all, it means Halloween. And two of our three, yes, only three new robots debuting at Proving Grounds this month fit such a theme perfectly. So get ready for terrifying 250 plus pound spiders and killer clowns that have been dormant for 20 years because we're jumping flashlight first into these spooky robots, their histories, and their ambitions here in just a moment on the Combot Collective. But as always, with a more sparse month like this, especially this month and all the other fights that are happening scheduled on Proving Grounds, these cards are subject to change without reason. We have only one full Proving Grounds weekend in October with champions taking center stage for the time being. So we can see robots maybe get taken out or even more robots be added to the Proving Grounds schedule to fill the handful of exhibition free weekends. I've heard murmurs of Disarray vs. Jackpot happening in October, maybe Maximum Paralysis appearing as well. But I believe, at least as of when we're recording this, that's all hype and speculation as of now. Let's go ahead and jump into these robots, these three exciting spooky machines. But first, as always here on the Combot Collective, especially so close to another NHRL event, the Combot Collective is sponsored, as always, by our friends at RobotsRoomMyLife.com. They are the merchandise provider for numerous East Coast robot combat teams and machines, such as BattleBots competitors, such as Shredderbro, Ripperoni, and Starchild. You can pick up your Shredderbro poker chips, Ripperoni bomber jacket, maybe their pizza box, Starchild t-shirts, maybe some prints, maybe some stickers of Starchild and that wicked logo they have. And, hey, just said it, NHRL coming up this weekend. We posted a video on it earlier this week. Check that out. You can get merchandise for NHRL favorites such as Milk Tank. You can get merchandise from big-time teams that compete at NHRL and BattleBots, such as Omega Team, such as Team Shreddit. You can even get NHRL and Robots Ruin My Life lifestyle merchandise. Get some stuff with those schnazzy RRML and NHRL logos on it. Plus numerous other things, tote bags, t-shirts, prints, jackets, poker chips, buttons. A lot of fun merchandise there. You can even get a t-shirt with a goose that appeared in NHRL last year. That's a fun little merchandise piece I don't see talked about a lot. All that and more. RobotsRuinMyLife.com. They are the proud supporters of the Combot Collective. 
And we got one more giveaway we're doing with him when Battle Boss Champions kicks off. Stay tuned for that. But here we go. Our short three robot list of spooky slayers kicks off with a true creepy crawly. For the first time since we did a video on Mark's Atrakian Stalker Robot, we are finally seeing another walking warrior entering the battle box with Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia is a five-legged, 250-pound true walking robot from, funnily enough, Walker, Michigan, and is being built by the Abbott family with some friends who are together known as Team Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia, believe it or not, is currently slated to be a Swiss army bot with both a 25 pound vertical spinner and horizontal spinner configuration planned for combat and added along with it some flamethrowers on deck at all times as a secondary weapon, all of which are lower set really close to the ground which could be perfect for taking out rival walking robots legs. Try to take them out from the weak spot down below. The story of Arachnophobia's proving ground process has been an interesting one. On April 14th, this robot was announced to the world as the first of hopefully many to be a part of BattleBots' new 250-pound walker class, and the team would first sign up for a demonstration, keyword there, demonstration, not a full-on fight, to happen across the weekend of July 29th to the 30th. But the team would miss this deadline due to some robot revisions, and over this time, we'd see the robot adopt a thinner chassis and shorter legs compared to its original CADs, which in theory would have made the robot more maneuverable and agile in combat. This complex build still took time though, despite all these changes. Arachnophobia was then slated for September 9th through 10th, but again, things had to be put on hold. But now we have no more delays. That brings us to just a few days from when I'm recording this here. On September 30th to October 1st, after a Proving Ground showdown between Scorpius and Slammo, very excited for that fight, two great teams there, will finally be due for our first genuine arachnophobia demo. The robot was seen earlier this month on a local news channel nearing completion, so we know it's finally ready, there shouldn't be any excuses this time, but I gotta be critical here, this is where I have to get to the worries that I have with this robot. Obviously, with walkers in the 250 pound class, there's going to be flaws. Chomp had issues, Rex had issues, Overhaul had issues, all three very different designs. And I cannot help but see issues with this design as well. The weapon, despite being in a pretty good area, seems fragile and ineffective. The method of movement seems like it would make for some incredibly slow action, not really good for reaction time. And perhaps the big one here for me, despite it being a walker, Arachnophobia looks like it skipped leg day. These legs are skinny. They don't look sturdy at all, in my opinion, and they seem seriously prone to breaking versus even the weakest of weapons. It'll be interesting to see how this robot moves. I mean, as long as the robot can keep its weapon pointing at the challenger, should stand a chance versus its fellow sluggish walker bots. You at least would think so, right? But now we move on to the middle of October for the 14th to 15th Proving Grounds weekend. Our only one which features a proper battle between two BattleBots debutees. And this is going to be a fascinating one. As here we have a robot which has never fought before taking on a robot which last fought nearly 20 years ago. But let's go ahead and start with our debutant. And sadly our only not spooky robot this month. Not really a fitting theme here. That is unless you're deathly afraid of aggressive mammals. We're talking about Warthog here, the second heavyweight robot in the modern era who can proudly call Las Vegas its home, taking claim to the Sin City before even Triton came to town. This unique looking robot was originally shown to the world at the very start of 2021 on the 3rd of January, revealed to be the creation of longtime BattleBots pit crew member Chris Hataja, a builder who has worked on Jackpot, Deep Six, and even part of my French. And nearly immediately, this robot would draw a lot of intrigue from fans online with its wacky design, which boasted what was claimed to be a full-body kinetic flipper, powered by an internal barrel flywheel, which took up a large portion of this robot's back half, giving the machine power to throw its front wedge upwards like we've seen in the past with Warrior Clan, but in a little bit of a different fashion. Warthog, alongside the Kinetic Energy Flipper, also boasted a very unique set of Omni wheels, kind of like what we've seen on Ominous and Shatter in the past, to drive this robot all around the battle box in hopes to give it better aim and control for these full body flips. 
But unfortunately, even though BattleBots itself was back in Las Vegas, Warthog, the local robot, would not be accepted into the 2021 BattleBots Championship season. And this left the team to slowly modify the robot quietly over time. And then when BattleBots finally opened up Proving Ground in May of 2023, soon after that, we would see the second CAD version of Warthog be revealed which, albeit refined, did look mostly the same on first glance, outside of a few notable major changes, with one being its UHMW lifting tusks being doubled from one tusk to two tusks. And then again, some added zaniness here. One of its wheels was now sitting at a 45 degree angle on a completely separate pod, kind of away from the robot. This got the buzz for Warthog brewing again, and then a few weeks after these CIDs were revealed, Warthog was officially announced to be competing at Proving Grounds that October, and the proper build progress on the robot was on. And you know, unlike some robots where we see nearly a different robot completely from the CAD to the real life process, Team Caribos Robotics seemed to stick almost exactly to their May 2023 design, from the kinetic energy flipper to the dual tusks to even the 45 degree angled wheel. Around the middle of August, Warthog would be completed full on, ready for battle, and then the test videos would come along soon after near the end of the month, where it was seen charging up its kinetic energy barrel and flipping a mini fridge about four feet into the air, perfect pirouette landed right on its base. These tests, though, really didn't impress some fans on online communities. After all, there is a vast difference between a mini fridge and a heavyweight robot, but you gotta keep in mind this was being done for torque testing. I do worry a little bit about the charging time for significant flips, but if Warthog is fast and nimble on its Omni wheels and has significant pushing power, which is something Omni wheels do lack, we gotta admit, we do have some reason to believe and have some faith in the hometown hog especially against such an old-school opponent and a certain killer clown I've been dying to talk about. Yes, I, I gotta be honest, y'all. When I started this whole Proving Grounds preview series to happen every single month, I pretty much started this series of videos solely so I can gush over how excited I am for freaking Robot Wars Extreme Warriors legend Conquering Clown of all fucking robots to return to the modern world of robot combat. In the year of our lord 2001, a team which went by the name of Silvus Robotics would bust into the scene by first attending BattleBots 3.0 with the two-wheel drive middleweight wedge bot named Gary Gizmo, a strange machine which on top of it boasted a mannequin of a dude wearing a hat armed with a pair of unique pneumatic hammers. And Gary Gizmo wouldn't shock the world. In fact, it went one on one, defeating Pushbot Velocity 1 before losing to the Pack Raptors. But this would be a mere beta test to what was to come across the pond at the first series of Robot Wars Extreme Warriors in the UK, where Conquering Clown was born. Conquering Clown, like Gary Gizmo, was a two wheel drive wedge bot armed with a mannequin with two hammers. But where Conquering Clown differentiated was it was a 220 pound heavyweight and it was, well, a clown. In the world of Extreme Warriors, an event with numerous wild and colorful robots with even more wild and colorful teams, the Conquering Clown fit right in with its begaggle of clown roboteers and their little <laughs> horn. Captained by Mike Flanagan and it quickly became a fan favorite amongst the TNN viewers and even the fans in the UK. We saw some Conquering Clown signs out there during its few outings. In its first event, it did miss out on the main US Championship bracket, but in the first ever all US Robot Annihilator, it would surprisingly impress. The hammers were not working, but in the first round it managed to push around Ripper Rapper and Red Virus. In the second round, it lost its hair, but bullied Red Virus even more, driving it into Unibite. And then in round three, sadly, Conquering Clown would fall to Drillzilla after getting its face completely melted by the flame pit. The Clown, though, returned for a second series of Extreme Warriors and ditched the goofy arm hammers for the weapon we're likely going to be seeing at Proving Grounds, the Horizontal Spinning Blade. This weapon will debut in Heat C of the United States Championship Tournament in an opening melee featuring two early drum bots in Brute and Sir Force a lot. The new version of Conquering Clown would dictate the fight's pace with some serious damage to Sir Force a lot's sides and Brute's wheels, which allowed it to move on to round two, where it defeated Black Widow, leading it on to a Heat Final versus former opponent Unibite, 
were to clown again. Shocking here, ended up victorious after outlasting a struggling Unibyte 2.0 to win Heat C. This would advance Conquering Clown to the Elite 8 Robot Grand Final, where it would unfortunately meet the robot which would eliminate it, Destructive Criticism, in Round 1. The fight would go the full 5 minutes, but Destructive Criticism's smaller but more powerful horizontal spinner did the most damage in the end, ending Conquering Clown's most notable run of its career. As the clown then returned to the USA to stay, but it would continue its career on the live circuit for a few more years where it battled the likes of Red Rum, Hexadecimator, Warrior, and even Tornado Mare who would be the one to end up destroying the US Series 2 version of Conquering Clown. Now though, after an almost 20 year hiatus, on the perfect month to do it, Silvis Robotics and the Conquering Clown return to try and claim the giant nut for the state of Illinois. You love to see it. And if the picture on the BattleBots wiki is to be trusted, it looks like Conquering Clown is going to be rocking a lot of what we saw back in the early 2000s on Robot Wars with the two-wheel drive wedge body and a fairly small horizontal spinning blade armed with two axe heads. Normally, such an old-school design would be a massive problem in a modern era. I mean, just look how Maximum Paralysis did. But perhaps with such a zany robot like Warthog, there may very well be some good chances for Conquering Clown to do some damage and maybe sneak into 2024 the same way many fans think Travis T will. Only time will tell until mid-October. But as an old head like myself said it numerous times before, I mean, shit, I've had Conquering Clown fights on VHSs recorded while I was growing up. I would absolutely love to see the Boomer Bot bounce back, rip apart a couple of machines, and maybe sneak into World Championship 8 as an alternate. That's going to do it, though. Three bots up, three bots down. Not a lot to talk about here, like I mentioned. We do have some veteran robots appearing at BattleBots Proving Ground this month. Like we mentioned in the video, Slammo is going to be there. Scorpius has been at BattleBots Proving Ground for a little while now, but hasn't been used, will be used this weekend. We also have, of course, like I mentioned, rumored, not official right now, at least as of when I was recording this. We know Maximum Paralysis is trying to show up. Some spooky snakes there. We got the snake right here. Ooh. Um, Jackpot trying to show up again, of course. Another local Las Vegas robot. And this array, University of Arizona. We just saw them split two fights with Taco Tuesday. They're trying to come back for their biggest challenge of them all, taking on Jackpot. So we'll just have to see how it goes. We'll have to see how Conquering Clown does against Warthog. I think Conquering Clown's going to have it. We'll have to see if Conquering Clown can still self-write. That was an issue for its, honestly, a large part of its career. Could be an issue here. Weapon reliability, also an issue for Conquering Clown. you got to worry about that. Whenever it lands hits, it lands good hits, but that weapon known to not really last long but that was also over uh, almost 20 years ago so hard to judge it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with two really just questionable machines in that matchup and honestly yeah very interesting to see what happens with arachnophobia we're finally making the first steps towards this 250 pound walker class that greg munson's so excited about we just heard him talk about it on behind the bots um in his recent interview some really good battle bots information there if you're looking for some more content to listen to behind the bots but here talking about the combat collective that's three bots up, three bots down on this Halloween-centric episode. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Shouts to Conquering Clown. We hope you do good. We hope you go far. Make Illinois proud. Make us old-school Extreme Warriors fans proud. Some, some love for all of us stands of Rosie the Riveter, you know, Brute, Snookums, um, Captain Shredder, not Captain Shredder Raider, Revolutionist. We could even see Conquering Clown versus Captain Shredder Raider. That would be a trippy fight to see in this modern era. I'm getting off topic. The Combot Collective is all over the place. You can find us online. We have an Instagram. We have a Facebook. Those are our social media pages. You can follow them in the description below. We make infographic posts there. We make stats posts there. We make news posts there. We inform everyone about our uploads there. Speaking of video uploads, our Discord server. We record Robot Combat tonight. Soon to be every single week when Battle Boss Champions kicks off on our Discord channel using the live mic feature. And of course, you're already here on the YouTube channel. Go ahead, like the video, leave a comment, give us your spooky Halloween thoughts on robots like Conquering Clown, on robots like Jackpot, maybe fighting Disarray, maybe fighting the walking robot arachnophobia, all that stuff. We would love to hear it. 
And of course, you're already here. Subscribe to the Combat Collective. Ring the bell icon because we've been gaining steam lately. We got more videos coming out, more event rundowns on events like Robots Live, Extreme Robots, Battle of Robots, more robot combat tonight with numerous episodes on BattleBots Champions come up. Live streams like Amidst the Havoc coming up. We got a lot of fun stuff happening. So stay tuned. Lock into the Combat Collective for all that. It's going to be a wild ride. But I'm your host, as always, Sterling Brown. Let's go ahead and get out of here. We'll see you next time on the TCC BattleBots Proving Grounds Preview. This was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest star ram and this Hello, everybody. It is another BattleBots. Nope, I don't like the slow intro. Shit, time out. <laughs> Crispy pumpkin. Well, thank God the smoke detector didn't go off. <laughs>